heart rate variability, vitamin D. To the naked eye, we wouldn't really think that there's an interplay there. Like we think heart rate variability just has to do with our stress and our exercise. And we think that vitamin D has to do with getting some sun and where the heck do they intertwine? Well, there's some interesting data that we're starting to uncover. And when we understand the mechanisms of how vitamin D works within the body as a hormone, not as a random vitamin, it really becomes pretty clear. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down some interesting data and an interesting study that really gives us some evidence here. But first, today's video sponsor is Thrive Market. I highly recommend you check them out. They're an online membership-based grocery store. They sponsored content on this channel for about four years and they are who I use to stock up my pantry. Now, whether I am paleo, keto, fasting, doing some experiment with plant-based, whatever, they have what I need all in one place. So go online, you can filter by what kind of diet you're doing, you can order your groceries, and then bam, they're at your doorstep within a couple days, and it's super convenient. Plus, because they're a sponsor, there's a link down below that saves you 25% off your initial order, plus you get a free gift. So you gotta use that link that's down below in the description, and a thank you to them for allowing us to do what we do, and thanks to you for supporting them for supporting us. A quick outline. First, heart rate variability is a metric that we use to understand our stress, really. Okay, it's, it's about as good as we can get to understanding our recovery and if we're stressed out. Uh, a simple example that's very clear as day is if I went seven days in a row working out really intensely, my heart rate variability would probably be low. And what that indicates is that the variability between heartbeats is low indicating that the heart doesn't have much room to be flexible. Flexibility is good, especially when you're talking about cardiac health, you're talking about this kind of thing. Having the ability to uh, be flexible to adapt to a stressor or adapt to a non-stressor and really have that variance there. If I am pushing myself to the limit, my sympathetic nervous system and my central nervous system are just like, like amped up all the time, well then yes, my score is gonna be much lower, meaning I'm not recovered. So we're always in this kind of world of trying to improve our heart rate variability. A high heart rate variability means we are ready to rock and roll. I'm not wearing it today, but I usually wear like an aura ring, kind of gives me a score, right? It gives me a score of my, uh, just where I'm at in terms of recovery with a heart rate variability being a factor. Okay. Now, what about vitamin D? Now, when you look at the data, you can see that vitamin D does play a role in terms of oxidative stress via what's called NRF2. It plays a role in helping deal with mental stress in people that have like coronary artery disease or cardiovascular issues. Basically, it can help reduce the stress impact on the heart. But I wanna focus a lot on fatty fish and the vitamin D content within fatty fish and how it could be playing a role on HRV. So this study that I wanna look at was published in the journal Psychophysiology. It took a look at 47 participants and it was very clear as day, put them into a control group or put them into a fatty fish group. In this case, it's probably things like salmon, sardines, mackerel, getting all the fats, the omega-3s and the vitamin D because the vitamin D is going to be in the fat content. What they found is that the group that had the fatty fish ended up having a significant increase in what is called high frequency heart rate variability. For all intents and purposes, they had a good increase in their HRV when they had a lot of fish in the diet. Pretty cool. But they also found that they responded better to stress testing, in this particular case, mental stress. So what's going on? Like, how does this happen? We are just scratching the surface with vitamin D, I will tell you that. There are so many mechanisms inside the body that we don't necessarily know that vitamin D plays a role with. But when you look at serotonin pathways, that's one of the things you can pay attention to the most, okay? So when it comes to heart rate variability, being able to relax is one of the most important things. You have to look at your life as a checks and balances of intensity and recovery, okay? In everything that you do, down to the nanosecond, okay? I always say like I am 100% on in that moment and then I really try to be 100% off out of the moment. Okay, I try not to be covering at 50% all the time. For lack of a better way of saying it, balance is BS. Like you're not gonna find balance, okay? You either go all the way and then recover or you don't do it at all because 50% effort is not gonna be worth anything, right? So the body really works the same way in terms of our mental stress. And when we actually have recovery to match, then things work, then things are in balance and our heart rate variability can improve. What if you're someone like me that really has a hard time relaxing and almost has to force themselves to relax, right? Well, there's things that you can do, but serotonin in general is a big player. From a neurotransmitter standpoint, if people have trouble relaxing, sometimes it's the fact that maybe they're not 
producing serotonin properly. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not diagnosing anyone. I'm just saying it's one of the things, right? You're stuck in that sympathetic nervous system. So the mechanism of vitamin D with serotonin is pretty fascinating. I'm not sure if you knew this, but tryptophan, like the protein, the amino acid that you get from protein, we always talk about Thanksgiving and tryptophan. Tryptophan is a precursor to serotonin. So before you go out and just scarf a whole turkey, let me explain something, okay? This tryptophan plays a role in serotonin. Serotonin obviously makes us feel relaxed and calmer. It's that neurotransmitter. But if we're deficient in vitamin D, there's some things that can happen. When we're deficient in vitamin D, we can affect the gene transcription of something called tryptophan hydroxylase, which is the enzyme that really breaks tryptophan down into the usable components to make serotonin, okay? It can also affect the gene expression of what are called serotonin reuptake transporters. Okay, this is very important. The reuptake of serotonin is very important. We want to be able to reuptake an appropriate amount to be able to utilize serotonin that doesn't get utilized. And we also want to not take it up when we don't need to take it up, okay? The bottom line with this is vitamin D plays a role in the VDR region of the brain that affects the gene expression of some very important contributors and enzymes to serotonin production. Does that mean that correlation equals causation? 100% not, because vitamin D is very difficult to really study. But you can look at hard data and then you can look at the softer data where you say people with lower levels of vitamin D seem to have poorer mood. People with higher levels of vitamin D seem to have a better mood. Okay. So when you look at the big equation, if you're trying to balance out your heart rate variability, it might not be a bad idea to add vitamin D into the mix. Now, I've said this in multiple videos. You can take a vitamin D supplement, but keep in mind that vitamin D supplementation, although it might help in the short term, it is still a synthetic form, and a synthetic form of vitamin D can still be a little bit iffy in terms of vitamin A. In the retinol form, you can deplete vitamin A. So in the short term, synthetic vitamin D in a supplement form is probably just fine, but over the long term, you really do wanna make a concerted effort to get vitamin D rich foods, okay? Fatty fish, salmon, get things like sardines, things like mackerel, things like even uh, lake and river trout are very, very high in vitamin D. And if you're not a big fish person, you can get a little bit in eggs, but remember that eggs are not gonna give you that much and the yolk is usually what has the vitamin D. Always go for the pasture, uh, pasture raised eggs. Those are gonna be ones that have been exposed to the sun, the hen's been exposed to the sun and the vitamin D passes through to the eggs. Another one are going to be mushrooms. Now remember, mushrooms are a vitamin D2, which has to go through a conversion process to become bioactive vitamin D3. So you need a lot more of it. But if you're plant-based or you're trying to find different ways, you can always add, I don't know, some mushrooms to your omelet or something like that. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.